Hello there all you Dark Sun community members. In today's video I'm going to be answering questions that I found on the Facebook page for Dark Sun and in the comments of my videos here on YouTube. I'm going to try to keep this one short so let's go ahead and get to the questions. I've seen our first question asked in one form or another many times on the Dark Sun Facebook page. It's about the nature of the Dark Sun specific demiplanes. The latest person to raise the question is David Latchpeel. Sorry if I messed up your name, David. His actual question is a little on the long side, so I'm going to paraphrase here. He asked if either the gray or the black are Athos's version of the Shadowfell. He follows this up by saying he remembers Kilifne being thrown into the black. I'm not sure where he got that last part, unless it's a 4E retcon or something. As for either the gray or the black being Athos's Shadowfell, the answer is no. They're something else. The Shadowfell was what in pre watsi days was called the Ethereal Plane. It and the Astral Plane, now called the Astral Sea, both touched every point on the Prime Material Plane, but not each other. Inside of Athos's Crystal Sphere is the only known exception to this. The gray is also kind of like Athos's Border Ethereal, only it also affects the Astral Plane. It makes it difficult to pass from Athos to the ethereal or astral plane. According to pages 9 and 10 of Defilers and Preservers, The Wizards of Athos 2445, the black is a place of cold and darkness that, like Athos, is also touched by the gray. Within it is Rajat's prison, the heart of nothingness, the hollow. To speak to what David said about Kildene, in 2E canon at least, there was a great catastrophe involving Kilid Ma's metamorphosis. This killed most of the people in the city and attracted the attentions of Ravenloft's dark powers. They transported the survivors along with a catatonic Kilid Ma to Ravenloft, a demiplane within the ethereal plane, and recreated their devastated city as a new domain. The multiverse in its current iteration is quite different than the way it was back then. If you would like me to make a video explaining the AD&D cosmology, just let me know in the comments below. Javon Uls, once again, apologies if I murdered your name, asked the next question. This question comes up a lot on the Dark Sun Facebook page as well. Once again, I'm going to paraphrase his question for expediency's sake. He wants to know what ancient real-world cultures were each of the city-states based on. Before I answer this, I would ask you to remember that the Dark Sun Wanderer's Journal is not a scholarly work. None of the city-states are historically accurate. Each of them have a dash of real-world flavor mixed in with a lot of just plain dark sun. Even that flavor is often based on nothing more than the pop culture tropes of the ancient cultures that are being borrowed from. An example of this is that the halflings aren't presented as accurate, deep Amazon tribes. They're more like a late 70s, early 80s Italian cannibal movie like Cannibal Ferox. With that understood, here are the real-world inspirations for many of the city-states. Balak is Greco-Roman inspired. Tyr is loosely based on the Phoenician city of Tyre. Uruk invokes Uruk and Babylon. Raim is pre-Islamic Arabian and Mughal Indian. Darj borrows from pre-Columbian Mesoamerican cultures. Nibane has ancient Cambodian and Thai influences. And Golg is like a pre-colonial sub-Saharan African village writ large. The last question comes to us from Christopher John Romano. After watching my video, How to Use Psionics, Psionics in AD&D 2nd Edition, he asks, I have a question I can't find the answer to. At certain levels, total disciplines go up by one, but you only get a devotion, no science. Can the PC have devotions in a discipline without a science? Well, Chris, the answer to your question is on page 12 of the Complete Psionics Handbook. As you can see here, Table 4, Sonic Power Progressions, shows when and how many disciplines, sciences, devotions, and defense modes a psionicist gains as they advance through the levels. In the column of text on the opposite side of the page, entitled Gaining Sciences and Devotions, some rules are laid out. The first rule is that within a given discipline, a psionicist must always have at least twice as many devotions as sciences. The second rule states that a psionicist's first discipline is their prime discipline. 
and that they must always have more psionic powers in their prime discipline than any of the other five. Because of this, devotions come first when a new discipline is gained. Sciences come later. The way the powers are given out on Table 4 facilitates this. Well, I hope these answers helped you understand and run your Dark Sun game a little more smoothly. If you have a Dark Sun or other old school D&D question that you would like me to answer, just leave it in the comments below. I'll answer it to the best of my ability there, and it might make it into my next Q&A video. Well, that's all I have for now today. Happy gaming, and have a great day.